Good morning. Welcome to One Life Community Church. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. Yeah, we're just going to give you a few ways to just make sure that you're better engaged in our gathering and that you can just have the best experience you want this morning. So the first thing is going to be come as you are. The glory of this is that you are in the comfort of your own home. You can stay in bed and join us. You can move to the couch with a cup of coffee or even prop us up on your kitchen table while you're eating breakfast with your family this morning. But we do want to encourage you to be present, so try to limit your distractions. If something does come up, go ahead and pause the video so that you don't miss anything. And then we are missing you. So interact with us. Make sure you're commenting or liking it so that we feel like we are with you. Yeah, and then when you're worshiping with us, we will have some songs at the end. So we will have the lyrics on there as well so you can sing along with us. We just really want to encourage you to fully worship the Lord in that time and just give over whatever you have to Him and just be present with Him today. But we are so glad you are here. We've got a few more seconds left before the service starts. So grab a refill of coffee, make sure you get comfy, and we hope you enjoy. Hey everyone, glad that you're with us again this week. Um, Being at home, I know things are different. We're adjusting a little bit, but do something for me. Uh, Right now in the comments section, uh, since we're not together physically and we can't handshake, hug, whatever, uh, give some high five emojis, some fist bump emojis, and just do that in the comment section. And just so people know we're there and, and present during this time, um, I hope everyone's doing better adjusting to schedules and to now shelter in place and, and what this looks like in our life. Um, I think as we've adjusted, a lot of us now are kind of looking at our circumstances and there's this question in the back of our minds like, when are things going to get back to normal? And, and when, when is this all going to be over? Um, shelter in place, social distancing, um, schools now, it's like, yeah, probably not going to happen till the fall. So it's like summer for a longer summer, but just at home. And um, the stress with that and kind of figuring out like, wh- when is this going to be over? And the, the other question uh, I think behind that is too, like, when are we going to get back to normal? And w- when are things going to get back to normal and life as we know it before um, the reality is it's going to be, it's going to be a while. It's going to be some time before things get back to the way they were before. But as I was thinking through this, um, maybe, maybe the normal we had before wasn't all that great. And maybe, um, we, we needed this time right now to just stop and to kind of look at life and how things were going, our, our schedules, our pace, and say, man, do I really want to go back to that? Um, I, I've been thinking about this a lot and just how pre-pandemic um, normal life was a little hectic, a little bit crazy. Um, I don't know about you, but my house, um, the pace has slowed down a lot. Uh, my wife no longer feels like a Lyft driver and um, just taking kids here and there. Um, we, we're not using words and phrases like, come on, hurry up. We're going to be late. Let's go. Let's go. Um, like we haven't done that now in two weeks. And uh, it's, it's just, it's different. And our pace, uh, the hurry, all of that just um, has kind of gone to the wayside. And um, we really thinking about this, thinking about our, our doing and how we are just going, going, going instead of being human. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but my normal life has been affected and infected by um, worry and anxiety 
because of pace, um, before all of this, um, just so many different things that are coming at us on a daily basis, finances, how to pay the bills, kids, homework, grades, um, you name it, just all these different appointment schedules, all of this stuff that, that just is in our everyday life that creates this anxiousness. And I think that we, we all have it. And during this time, it's helped me just to step back and look and say, oh, pre pandemic, I was worried or anxious about some things that were really not that important. Um, I had anxiety about things that really were out of my control. And uh, just thinking through that in our life, you know, a month ago, what were the things in our life that were causing stress or anxiety before all of this? Um, What are the things that stressed us out? And, And right now during this time, it may be similar, but now exaggerated. Or on the other side of it, we might have just put some things away and said, oh, that's not really important. But now there's a whole new set of worries. And I think for uh, us to understand that when circumstances change, then our thoughts change. And um, just the mental paths that we go down change. Um, we're faced with an entirely new way of living right now. And so in that, we've taken our worry and anxiety that maybe was in one place before, and we've just now exchanged that for a whole new set of worries and anxieties. Um, I, I think about like helicopter parents, you know, like those of you who are helicopter parents, like, no shame, not shaming you, um, no, not judging, <laughs> not judging you, but like, you know, worried about all the little things about, oh, is your kid doing this? And is their grades this and that? And how are they doing over here? And making sure they have friends and all of that stuff. And now the helicopter parents like, I just, I don't want my kid to get sick. You know, it's just a different worry, um, for, um, uh, employees, at, you know, that were at a job, you know, at once was like, oh, I want a pay raise or I want a promotion and, and the stress with that and maybe the anxiety now is exchanged for, I just, I want to keep my job um, or teachers and the stress and the anxiety of trying to prepare students to take a star test. I was going to say stupid test, but it's star test <laughs> and getting kids ready for this test. Now, all of that anxiety and that stress is now exchanged for, man, I, I just, I hope that this kid here is okay. I hope they're getting a meal at home. Um, and we can, we do this right now when our, our circumstances change, when our situations change. Um, and I feel like during this time that God has just like pressed the pause button on our life and what was normal and had us sit there and think, what is a priority right now? What, what am I worrying about? Um, hurrying, being busy, hectic, chaotic, just filling our life with so much stuff. I mean, our calendars having so much in it, but like, I don't know about you, but like, Right now, April, May, my calendar, I'm pretty clear, man. I don't know. You want to hang out? <laughs> like, <laughs> from a distance, yes. Like, distance. that, I mean, it's all gone. It's all shifted. Um, but worry and anxiety is still at an all-time high. It's just different now. Um, some, there's some things now that have never caused anxiety for me ever in my life. And now in this situation, I'm freaking out. I mean, I went to the store last week and I had my hand sanitizer and I got the little wipe and I had it on the cart and I was like, just being real careful, you know, and I was going to pick up some prescriptions. And then I see like, like eight people in line and four of them have masks on. And I'm like, oh, not today. Like I just keep on rolling through the store. I have a list on my phone and I'm looking at it and I go to the shelf where things were and there's nothing there. And I start looking and I see all these ingredients for like recipes to make stuff. 
and there's like two or three things missing. And I'm like, I don't like, can we even make what we're going to make? Cause we're missing stuff like the whole thing, no cheese, no biscuits, no, you know, just gone. And I start to, you know, I'm like feeling this anxiety in the moment. Then my phone rings and I'm grabbing it with hand sanitizer, trying not to touch my <laughs> face. This lady across from me, like she's coughing. And, you know, I just like this whole, I was standing in the aisle with a cart full of groceries. And like in that moment, I was like, I'm about to bounce. Like I'm out, I'm leaving the cart. This is freaking me out when this isn't, I'm never, I've never felt that in that moment before being at the grocery store. And then when I leave, I'm starting to think, oh, my throat's kind of hurting. You know, I don't feel that good. Maybe I'm, you know, and in my mind, I just go down this trail of like worry and anxiety. Um, and, and that's the problem with worry and anxiety. Like our circumstances, they are going to change. They change all the time. It's just how we handle it, our thought process, um, and, and us being able to find our way through whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance is, because we inevitably will find our way back to, um, our mind being really warped by worry. Um, this unseen anxiety and worry, it does something in us. And, uh, today I just wanted to share with you, everybody, just a little bit from, a guy named Paul, whose name before that was Saul, who was just a, just hated followers of Jesus, put him in prison, had him killed. Um, but then he had an encounter with Jesus. His life drastically changed. His circumstances changed. And he began preaching the gospel of Jesus, helping plant churches, all of this. And then he finds himself um, on his way going to Rome to preach the gospel and then he's arrested and put in prison. And it just, it resonated with me, his circumstances of being in prison, which I know our homes are not prison, but isolated, like on lockdown, um, being away from people. Um, social distancing for him was real and him being in that moment, in that time, but his perspective was so, so rare. And uh, he, he says this, he says, do not be anxious about anything. And like, you can read that and go, oh, pff, easier said than done. You know, don't be anxious about anything. Okay, you haven't had to deal with this, man, but you're in prison, so okay, maybe. And, and here's what we forget with, uh, this word anxious or worry in some translations, it, it literally means distracted. It means uh, to be divided in parts and to be pulled in different directions. And so he's, he's saying, don't be distracted or pulled in different directions, no matter whatever, no matter the circumstances. Um, because what happens is, this anxiety, this worry, it pulls us from the reality of the current moment in time. And it takes us to a place that's in the future and down a trail of all the unknowns, the what ifs, and really a lot of fear. And so, um, I think we all, we all have this in life, the things that we are stressed about or we worry about or that create anxiety in us. And I just want to know from y'all, like, what are some of those things in life for y'all? Besides this conversation? I was going to say that. <laughs> Good grief. Isn't that funny? Like I'm just, sitting here and I'm anxious. I'm like, <laughs> you're not going to the store now. I'm picking my fingernails. It's totally off. You were. Right <laughs> you were picking your fingernails. I was too, though. No. Um, you know, it's funny because for me, mine's not hugely different. But in some ways it is. I feel like my constant anxiety is um, not being good enough um, as a mom, as a worker, as a wife, um, as a friend. And I think that, like you said, with busyness, I mean, my schedule was wake up, you know, Ellie goes to daycare. I go to work. I pick Ellie from daycare. I have to figure out how to cook. And I don't know how to cook. I've had to learn. That's been stressful and brought me anxiety. I've had to learn how to cook because I can't go anywhere. Um 
But I mean, I feel like it's still the same, but now it's shifted to where like, okay, well, am I teaching Ellie enough? Like, is she growing? Is she learning enough? Is she, um, am I being a good worker? Like, am I getting enough done while I'm still, cause now I'm a stay at home mom, but still have a full-time job. And so it's just tr- shifting. I mean, like you said, it's, it's hard to keep up. And so I think right now it's almost like living out of constant anxiety, which isn't healthy. And it just shows that my trust is off, you know, and, um, but luckily I haven't been as afraid of the virus. Um, I mean, I've been precautionary and taken all the steps, but I'm not as worried about that besides people losing their jobs and us possibly losing our job. I mean, so I'm, it's weird because I have a lot of faith and trust in that, that God will take care of me. But then in all the others, when it's like my job, it's like I'm taking that on and making it about me <laughs> yeah what about you brennan i mean anxiety is foreign to you right i don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> he's like my mind is is like solid my mind's like that scene from 1917 uh spoiler alert it's world war one uh, but that this guy he's trying to deliver this message to his commanding officer and he's trying to go through the uh the bunker like that they made well it's and then he's like yeah i don't know i'm gonna jump over and just run through this minefield or you know where all these mortars are just being dropped and so that's kind of if, if you were to peer inside my brain it's me just yeah like uh, dang uh, uh, jump. so um so <laughs> this this time is really just there's just more there's just more mortars being thrown. It's mm-hmm. like it has honestly, it's just another invisible enemy that I'm fighting, like mm-hmm. uh in my own head. But um yeah, I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> breathe. There's you know, beauty that comes out of it. Um mm-hmm. this morning, <laughs> Christina, a lovely, lovely wife, um, if you're listening. She was late to online church last week, by the way. Mm. Call out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she was watching a webinar this morning and I was braiding her hair and she Sweet. goes, and you have something to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of sweet though. <laughs> I know. I like, <laughs> but yeah, the new normal is, uh, it's pretty the same for me. Yeah. So, well, well I, yeah. I know that like, like that some people and like they're they're bent more in that direction it's a harder fight in a in a battle that's constant and i think for some of us now who maybe wasn't such uh anxiety worry wasn't such a big deal where now there's just a whole new set that maybe triggers some things um in this in this passage that paul's talking about here there's some encouragement for us and it's really just a, a process for us to walk through um, he says, do, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, every situation, no matter the circumstance, because it's going to change. Um, he, he gives us this path. He says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So he gives us this mental path to walk down and really rise above any of the anxiety and the worry. And these these different aspects of prayer, petition, thanksgiving and prayer is just a simple exchange you know conversation with god listening talking maybe listen then talk talk then listen but just a conversation like if you're angry if you're sad if you're frustrated if you're afraid just having that conversation like he knows and he can handle it no matter what it is and so just talking the good and the bad he can he can handle the weight of the worry in the moment um this last week we were online for a a bible study and uh aaron rask who's uh, our director of operations here at the church he was on there and we were talking about a a passage but he he said something that that really triggered with me about um confession and even looking at this from the aspect of like confessing that worry, confessing that anxiety, like saying it and how many times for us confession, we just like, oh, he already knows we're just going to keep on going. Where if we actually take the time and say, hey, 
I need your help because I'm struggling with this. God, you know my thoughts right now. Can you help me? Um, he can take the good and the bad no matter what it is. Um, he knows and he's listening. Um, I, I think in that we just prayer, we think it's just sitting at home or on our knees or whatever. But this is a constant thing throughout the day, no matter the situation in the grocery store, like saying, hey, that lady just coughed, but <laughs> protect me. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know, but we can do it all the time. Um, the, the petition part of this, the second part of this is really like, it really means like this specific heartfelt request, like an urgent personal need, like that this is what is going on inside of you in your heart and your mind and, uh, being able to, to just tell him to ask, to say whatever it is. Um, and I think for a lot of us, in the last two weeks, those, those urgent needs, those petitions have changed yeah. so much. It, it's, you know, now some of the stuff that maybe I never before was a regular habit as far as like asking God, but like, Hey, protect my family, protect us from this sickness, protect the people around me that I love and care about, protect them and their families. Yeah. Just, I mean, even y'all, and your families protect y'all. Um, praying for uh, doctors and nurses, you know, and their well-being and their energy and their wisdom during this time. Um, a, a petition and asking God, you know, for our city leaders, our government to um, have those people that are in those positions. God, give them wisdom ask, uh, ask him, petition him and say, God, will you do this? Cause this is an urgent need, but they, they've shifted. And I think, you know, for, for some, these petitions, um, have completely changed because it's, it's now, um, God, I don't know what I'm going to do financially. God, I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to have a job. Would you, would you help me keep my job? Or I, I don't have a job now. I lost my job. So now this petition of God, what are you, what are you going to do? Will you help me? Cause I need you. I think that now those petitions are way different maybe than they were a couple of weeks ago. And it's good. He can handle it. And he wants that from That's us um, because there are some of those things right now that are deep down in us. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of anxiety. Um, and just saying, God, will you do something? Cause I need you to do something. And now people are probably yelling it when they used to be silent. You know, yeah. I love that you said that he For can sure. handle it because he can. Yeah, it's good. Um, so this prayer petition and then the last part of this, just Thanksgiving, um, this really means like out of God's grace that we're, we're thankful, um, giving thanks, um, for his grace. And here's the part in this that I think that we miss giving thanks for his grace that is for our eternal good and for his glory. And, um, so often we can say we're thankful for just, just random things or whatever, but like understanding like his, his grace on our life, like the, the things that are for our eternal good that are for his glory, because this life isn't about me. It's not about you. It's not about us. There's a much bigger picture and right now we're in the middle of this mess and we don't understand the things that are going on but we have the ability to choose what we're thankful for who we're thankful for um and and big or small whatever it is and i, I think just asking ourselves a question like do people see do people see me as an exceptionally grateful person do the people that I love the most know how thankful and grateful I am for them? And so like, these are just some 
during that worry, during that anxiety, this prayer and petition, but then like turning our thoughts toward like, man, look at God's grace in my life. Look what he's done here. Look at the people. Um, it's huge. So like, I want to ask you guys, like, who or what are you thankful for? My lovely wife, Christina. <laughs> um, no, for real. I, I you imagine. are. You are. <laughs> A better partner or person to be, uh, have my wagons hitched to. Um, I mean, she's a fantastic person. Um, huge heart, hard worker. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for that stability. And I know there's a lot of people that are hunkered down alone. Yeah. So to think about, man, I've got somebody Mm -hmm. good. Um, thankful for family and uh, I mean, we're healthy today. Yeah. So, what about you, Katie? I'm really thankful for my boss. He's super hot. Um, I live with him, so that's nice. He has a permed mullet, which I think is super cool, and I totally approve of, just in case anybody wondered. No, um, my boss is my husband, Logan, but I'm super thankful for him. He is trying to run a business while also taking care of his employees to make sure they still can feed their families and afford their living situations and thrive. And, um, and yet he still comes home and, um, pursues me and I could cry thinking about it because he really has been super great, um, during a super stressful time. And he's the best, he's the best husband and the best dad. And, um, And yet he still, you know, puts God first and then puts me second, even over our little girl, which is hard. So I'm crazy thankful for him um, pursuing and loving and leading me to Jesus every day. I didn't mean to get emotional. Like started funny and then. Good. Um, It was really the mullet thing that got me to the mullet, Um, (laughs) the perm, (laughs) the perm mullet. So good. Um, Gets me teary eyed too. Through this continual conversation, like looking at this and going, when the worry, when the anxiety comes in through prayer, through petition, through Thanksgiving and this exchange and listening and asking and saying what we're thankful for, something supernatural really can and does occur because it's in that moment that we begin to understand that God is near that he is present. He knows our current condition. He knows our doubts, our fears, all of that. And he knows what we need and he's listening. Um, There's this song that we sing that I wanted you guys to sing right now um, before we finish. But some of the lyrics to that song have always just just got me um, that Jesus, who was and still is, He'll be through it all, no matter what. Um, And and then it says, so what what may come in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning, I know I'll never be alone. And I think that is huge for all of us right now. So I want you guys to sing that song. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be And this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me was another in the waters holding back the seas should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free there is a cross that bears the burdens where another died for me there is another in the fire I'm no longer 
longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminder Power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody Now the power lives in me There is another in the fire Thank you guys um, in this, that knowing that we will not ever be alone in this process of prayer, petition, thanksgiving. It, it, it guides us no matter the circumstances. And, and Paul being in prison, someone who's actually lived some circumstances and situations that I will never live in this life. He, he goes on here and he, he tells us what happens when we choose to walk in this process. He says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What once was a, a distracted, uh, a divided and a worried mind through the process um, becomes now whole and full of peace. Um, this peace is it's a gift only from God that can only come through Jesus and this gift, God's gift of Jesus and knowing him, it positions us to rise above the circumstances, whatever they are. Um, and this transcending, it, it means to really go beyond and to have above and surpass the situation because of our Savior and that our thoughts, our minds are fixed on him. And because of Jesus, we can surpass the situation. We can rise above the anxiety knowing that Jesus took on our worry and our anxiety. He can handle that. Um, may, may we know that, that God is near and may we no longer allow the enemy to whisper lies that distract and divide our minds, but may we um, live in the moment fully present knowing and believing that Jesus is with us. He is listening and that our hearts and minds are whole. May we choose this path that, that leads to peace that goes beyond all understanding. I want to take a minute and I just, I want us to pray together. 
Father God, thank you for today and um, being in this time with so many different people in different places, in homes, on couches, in chairs, maybe even laying in beds, um, just listening um, to your word. And I ask that today, in this moment, right now, in this time, um, that when the, the worry and the anxiety comes in, that, that we um, would know that we can talk to you, that we can have a conversation and exchange, and we can ask and let you know those urgent needs. You already know, um, but we can fill that conversation with emotion, and you can handle it. Um, and that also that in that conversation that, that we choose gratitude, that we choose to remember um, who and what we're, we're thankful for and your grace in our lives. And that, that through this, that we would rise above whatever the, the, the anxiety is, whatever the worry is, and, and know that you're near and that you're in control. Um, for some... Uh, for some listening right now and watching, um, maybe this is the place where you've lived your life, and maybe even right now in these current, uh, this current situation and circumstance um, that it's it's just escalated. And um, my hope and my prayer is that you would know the one, the one who gave his life to take on all worry, all anxiety, any and everything that separates you and me from God, that that Jesus came and gave his life. Jesus, the perfect one, the Son of God, came here on a mission to save, to set captives free from anxiety, from worry, from fear of the future, and um, that this Jesus lived a perfect life, and he gave his life and, and paid a price for all of our sins beyond worry and anxiety, but rebellion, doing our own thing, thinking that life is about us, and um, he gave his life out of love for all of us, and he died a death on a cross and paid a price that that we could never pay. But in that that payment for our sin, um, we, through faith in Him, are made right with God, and He is God because He defeated death, sin, and Satan. He rose from the dead. He's alive, and He will come again. And that any of us here and now, in this moment, in this time, if we... If we believe that Jesus is Lord, that He is God, and that um, He gave His life for us, for our sin, that anyone who calls on His name, anyone who puts their faith and trust in the name of Jesus, the name that's above all names, that they will be saved. And I just ask that today that we we all turn our eyes to You, Jesus. You are... um, You are the ultimate authority. You are still king. You're still on your throne. No matter our circumstances or situations, that we look to you. And that that you would use this time in our lives and in the lives of the people around us to, to fully understand the brevity of life, the shortness of life, and that you are the creator, the sustainer, the life giver, that you, you are good and you're God and we can trust you. And I, I pray and I ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Would you, would you guys sing this song um, for us as we close? Just reminding us um, of who Jesus really is. Ski. Okay.
Just be reminded that Jesus is near through all of this, and there is a plan, and we can trust Him through this entire process and through the days ahead. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day today, and we'll um, see you online throughout the week. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are so glad that we got to interact with you in community. There are a few other ways for you to get involved throughout the week. Yeah, first things first is we're going to drop in the comments uh, just a little Google form that's Q&A of just some questions about what we just listened to you in the sermon and how we can help use that to guide our conversation for our Wednesday night live stream. So Wednesday, come back and join us if you want answers to those questions or more in-depth information about the sermon at Wednesday at 6.30 on our Facebook page. We have a few different ways for you to give. If you can give financially, you can do that online or through the app. If you can give in other ways, please fill out our form because we want to be serving our community alongside you. And if you have a specific need, please also fill out that form so that we can be serving you well. If you have prayer requests, please text our prayer line so that we can give those off to our prayer team and be praying specifically for you. Yes, and then a couple more ways to just stay connected this week is we do have a One Life Communications Facebook page. So on that page is kind of the first place that we throw up some information and some needs that we have that people have commented on and ways that we can just better serve people. So make sure you join that if you want to be a little more in the know on what's going on around here. And then we also have DBS group. So DBS is Discovery Bible Study. We have a men's group and a women's group. So we do that weekly and we just have good resources to just be in community and go through scripture with people virtually, of course, and we just want to make sure that you are joining those to just still have conversation with people throughout your week. So we are so glad that you joined us this morning, and we are looking forward to interacting with you more this week.